Hello, welcome back to Motors TV. I'm Sean with iRacing.com. I'm here at Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. The Circuit of the Americas is the United States' premier Formula One racetrack. And behind me, our engineers are scanning the racetrack for the purpose of bringing it into the iRacing.com service. Once we've gathered all the data, our engineers will piece it back together and build the racetrack at our headquarters in Boston, Massachusetts. When we're done, iRacing members from all over the world will be able to race here on a racetrack that is accurate down to just millimeters in size. Stay tuned to see how we do it. Hi, I'm Kevin Einarelli, associate producer at iRacing.com, and today we're laser scanning Circuit of America. We get every nuance of the racetrack from the bumps, the curbs, um, the surface itself, all the buildings in, outside of the surface. Um, and then we bring that back to the office where we uh, start to mo model and map it all out and build it from there. We do about 300 feet a scan, which is about an hour's worth of time, and we're, we're anticipating about 60 to 80 hours worth of scanning. So it's a pretty big project for us to do on this 3.4 mile road course. The surfaces that we're looking for today and what we're scanning is uh, the grid grass, the astroturf, the rumble strips, the, the curbing on the inside of the apexes, the painted lines, the asphalt, the walls, armco, grass, everything the laser will, uh, will uh, catch and uh, 3D map for us into every little nuance of points that we gather. When laser scanning, the laser sends out a beam and it sends back a reflective property for each uh, each surface type on the, on the racetrack. So um, a painted line is going to have a higher reflective property, so it's going to show up as a brighter color, where an asphalt or a darker material is going to have a darker or a reddish tint to it. So it has a less, of, less of a reflective property to it. All of the braking zones and acceleration zones will be captured with the brake marks and tire skids, all that included from the uh, data. As long as the rain doesn't wash it out, which we've had a little bit of rain so far, but I think we're in the clear to capture all that data. The level of accuracy that we're talking about with the laser scanner is down to the millimeter. It's, uh, it's kind of ridiculous how much it can capture. Say about four miles of track will be covered if you include pit road and all that. The whole surface will be within a couple of millimeters of accuracy. My role back at the office is um, I assemble the racetracks. I build what we call the spline, which is everything inside the Armco barriers. I build and map out, and then we, I send it off to our texture artist, who will then texture all the uh, grass textures, asphalt, painted lines, um, rumble strips, all of that he'll take care of. And then I'll come back, and then I'll do the finish up work of race control and TV cameras, lines, all of that. Along with the data collection, not only of just the laser scanning, but we do uh, GPS points, which we use to reference the track into a terrain so we can build everything outside of the racetrack and match it properly to our 3D point cloud in space. We have a photographer on site right now taking thousands upon thousands of photos, which we will use to, to replicate every building, uh, the race surface itself, anything within sight line to build at this racetrack. Once we finish scanning, we'll stitch all of our scan worlds together into one huge point cloud, and then we dump that into our proprietary software at the office, and then we uh, start to we use a program we call Sandbox and model it from there. Greg Hill and myself, we pretty much manage the tracks from start to finish on data collection all the way to the polish work that it takes to in, into going to release these tracks on iRace. It's nice to know that we have the best tracks out there today and car models just because of the technology that we're using to capture all of this data. Hi, my name is Greg Hill and I'm the Vice President of Art and Production here at iRacing. Uh, I oversee the creation of our tracks and, and we're hoping to give you guys insight in what it takes to not only capture those tracks in the field but create them when we get back here at the office. So we hope you enjoy it. 
when the team brings the data back to the office, one of the first tasks that is performed is we need to convert that data into a format that our proprietary tools can load. This is uh, our tool called Sandbox, and you're viewing the track from high up in the air straight down, and that's the laser scan that you're seeing. So that shape of the, the track is actually the scan and millions and millions of points. One thing you'll notice in this view is you can see various aspects of the track and features such as the painted lines, which you have here, a different color asphalt here from here, and this is the red asphalt, and the grass right here. And although this isn't true color, we're able to capture the reflective properties of all of these different materials with our scanner, and it gives us a good sense when we're modeling the track of where to lay down the detail. The first step in the track's development is for the production staff to go in and start to lay down the basic geometry or surfaces of the track itself. So here's the first turn, and we've created it with a series of curved segments that we've linked together. And as the track begins to straighten out, the curvature changes until we get to straight segments. And you can see right here what the process is to continue that. And we trace those segments to what we see in the point cloud. You'll also see these various color lines. These lines identify where we've flagged the different features of the track. So this is a painted line. We'll lay one down here for the, the rumble strip and curbing, grass edge, etc. Here you can see what we've been modeling but with the textures and color information visible. The great benefit of building tracks in this manner is that we can rapidly iterate them and get them into a form that can be tested and driven on. The testing process begins here in the office as we begin to run driving lines and just see how the cars are interacting with the, the surfaces that we've created. And then we expand that to our testing environments where we have several testers who all drive the track nonstop looking for issues and they really help us out. Some tracks will be in that testing phase for a period of a couple of months while the testers get us feedback and we go in and address the issues that they've found. The point of the testing is to make sure that we've created a high quality product and we haven't let any issues slip through the cracks. All right. All right, here you can see we're approaching the first turn of Circuit of Americas. This is in our development tool and we've been modeling this track for about a week. So we've made this progress in about a week's time. And you can see we've begun to lay down key details such as where the walls are, the different materials, curves, painted lines, astroturf, and you can see we also have the elevation changes and the grade of the track modeled. Our tools are really great for making sure that the overall elevation of the track and the, the physical surfaces are exactly where they need to be in space as where they are in real life because of the laser scan. You can see here, here's a section that does not yet conform to the data that we've captured in the scan. And I'll show you that getting it to match that is very easy. All right, let me turn off the sky so that we can see this better. So these tools have been custom tailored to work with the laser scan data, and they have a lot of automation in them. So while we model from the top-down perspective, our tool is able to analyze the point cloud data beneath the track surface that we've modeled and conform the surface to that. So you can see here the track that we've modeled is just running flat from the previous segment. But we're able to go in and tell it to analyze the points beneath it. And I'm doing that right now. And you can see just how rapidly it's able to conform that surface to the surface of the racetrack. By doing that, we can ensure that you're racing on track surface that's within millimeters of what the laser scan presents. And you can really see that as we run along the circuit here. You can see the colored dots and the gray pavement so close together that they're draw almost drawing on top of each other. What we've modeled compared to what the scan is showing are essentially overlapping to within millimeters of accuracy. So we're able to get essentially any subtlety or nuance in the racetrack that appears in our laser scan that has points within millimeters of each other so nothing is missed and translate that into the racetrack that we modeled. So any crack, bump, unique characteristic of a track that a driver might expect to be there that you wouldn't even notice visually or with traditional measuring tools that will inherently be caught in the data that we've created 
and the analysis process will bring that forward into what we've modeled. The end result is hyper-realistic representation of the track that behaves and drives and interacts with the virtual race car, just as it would with a real race car in real life. Circuit of the Americas is a state-of-the-art facility. It was just completed, and the buildings here are architecturally very interesting, and our artists are really looking forward to creating them. You can see here, we're looking again at the laser scan, and this is the garage and suites facility that goes along the main street. So what we'll do is we will take this scan data of just this building, and then we will combine that with hundreds of photographs of every single feature and facet of that building, and we'll send that to our 3D artists. We'll then load it into their tools, and they will model it. Not only do we have a laser scan of every building at the track, but we also have hundreds of photographs. Our artists will load the scan into 3D Studio Max, and they'll also bring up the photographs, which have captured every subtlety and nuance of the building, and they're able to use that data to hand trace out the building, making sure that the building is just as accurate as the track is, because the data is the same. This is another really interesting structure. This is the main grandstand at the track, and it has these very complex awnings that go over and provide shade in the hot Texas heat to the spectators. So we'll spend weeks developing a plan for how the artist will approach every track. But we'll create not only the obvious objects that you see at a track, but also some of the more obscure ones, because you never know a racer or fan who's been to a racetrack will have identified a certain feature of the track, perhaps even as a breaking point. And if we don't create that exactly where it is in real life, we'll have not done our job. So we make sure that even the obscure objects and the obvious ones are recreated and in the simulation. We're able to get these objects exactly where they need to be, just inherently because of the point cloud data. So we build the objects to where they are in the point cloud in our 3D tools, and when we add them to the sim, they're exactly where they need to be. Another interesting object that we'll be creating is the observation tower, which you can see here, which is located just in front of a stage, which is used for many shows. Here you can see looking up at the observation tower, there are these holes or ports here. Those are actually glass panels that you're able to stand on top of and look down. So let's go do that. If you're afraid of heights, don't worry. This is the safest way to do it. So here we are viewing Circuit of the Americas from 77 meters up from the observation tower, from the safety of your home. One of the unique things about this track is just the artistry and detail that they put into their runoff areas. And all this track should take about a year and a half worth of man hours to recreate, but we expect we'll be able to do that in about a six month period when it comes to real time. We're able to do this because we have a large team of artists who are all able to work on the track at the same time. And they're able to all contribute in different ways uh, to the track. So some artists will be working on the terrain that surrounds the track and meets the edges of the track. Other artists will be building the structures, the main buildings, the suites, the garages, whereas others will be focusing on small details such as the power line infrastructure that surrounds the track or the grid of fences that um, secure different areas of the track, all the way to details such as the speaker poles and the lights that surround the track. Starting with our physics, the goal of iRacing is to deliver and create the most hyper-realistic racing experience possible outside of an actual race car. And that trickles through all the way to our racetracks. So when we're creating the artwork for our racetracks, we'll create pretty much everything we see. Um, and sometimes you might say we go too far. We feel that this attention to detail is the only way to accurately recreate a track and deliver you the most authentic experience possible. This comes at a cost to us because it takes a great deal of time and effort to get things as they are in real life. There's no fudging it, but we feel that this cost is worth it because it, in the end it creates a very compelling and unique representation of the racing world.